Reputation management is a service that has been much maligned in the media of recent times and has a lot of misinformation and disinformation surrounding exactly what it is, what it refers to, and particularly um, how it's applied. Reputation management in and of itself basically means online PR, okay, in essence. It means promotion, you know, promoting a positive message about a given client or given business or website. It means protection, meaning proactively, you know, scanning for negative stuff going online and responding to that negativity with something either positive or, or even inquisitive. You know, somebody posts a negative review, you may want to see if what exactly happened, see if you can help out. The business, you know, wants to be notified to see if they can rectify the situation and, you know, turn things around for that client. Maybe they'll remove the ad, maybe they won't, but they want to do what they can. They're not looking to have angry clients out there. And the third sort of part of reputation management is repair. And that is where a given client, given website has, you know, a lot of bad PR about it on the web, a lot of negativity out there, perhaps justified or perhaps not, but reputation management in that case would um, basically mean repairing or either diluting or knocking down or in one way dis or another displacing the negative stuff online for that given client. When it comes to reputation management services and strategies, the strategies are tied directly in with the service. Um, and this is where, you know, things can sort of turn a little dark, all right, because you have on the one hand, let's say promotion, right? We're talking about promoting or, um, you know, putting out a positive, positive spin on a given website or business. That positive spin for that website or business can mean a lot of things. It can mean going to existing clients and gathering testimonials and putting them on the web. It can mean going and posting truthful, factual, positive information about a given business all over the place on the internet, in blogs, and forums, all over the place where it's allowed to do so. But it can also mean very nefarious things because sometimes businesses want fake reviews put out there about themselves. Sometimes businesses want fake stuff put in forms. Sometimes businesses want to impersonate people and put stuff out there like that. You know, sometimes businesses aren't even businesses and the people posting stuff are actually entities that are posting, you know, crazy stuff that has nothing to do with business at all. Uh, and this is where reputation management as a service really gets a negative reputation itself because it can be used as a term to really cover up um, some very nasty stuff. But in essence, you know, if you boil it down to just the actual service itself, it is not good or bad. It is merely um, a service, okay? It can be used for good and it can be used for bad, but it's not bad in of itself. Now, moving on here, when we talk about reputation management in terms of protection and what the service looks like for that, it basically usually looks like uh, scanning, okay, either physically by human beings or often by a combination of people and by software, looking at popular review sites like Yelp and um, other places online like maybe TripAdvisor, etc., and looking for negative reviews coming up about a given client or a given business and then informing that business and or automatically responding on that business's behalf so that they uh, get the message out there real quick that they care about negative reviews and that they want to proactively um, take the steps necessary to help out, you know, or that they want to, you know, they want to preempt this stuff going online. They don't want negativity about themselves. The quickest way to stop negative reviews is not to argue and fight back with people because people will just post more negative reviews. Instead, it's to respond and say, hey, we're sorry you had a bad experience. You know, we'd really like to help you out. Can you give us a phone call or can we have your number? We'd love to call you or contact us immediately. Uh, reaching out to people who are posting stuff like that and helping them out. Because generally, and I'm not saying always, but generally people post negative reviews if they legitimately have a bad experience. When you see a pattern of negative reviews about something, it's generally because people are having a tough time. They're having problems. So being, you know, somebody in the position of, trying to protect someone that has negative stuff going online, the way that you handle that is you make sure that the business is notified, that automatic responses are going out, that, you know, people posting negative stuff know that their complaints matter to the business and that they are not, uh, you know, just going to be left to sit online and rot. 
And usually most people, at least a lot of people, will remove negative reviews if the complaint is taken care of in a timely manner. Most people won't even make a negative review if things were taken care of in the first place. But let's face it, a lot of businesses, these kind of things just happen. People fall through the cracks. You can't catch every problem that everyone's going to have these days. And the last sort of piece and a, a part of reputation management where you can run into some good people and you can run into some bad people um, is when it comes to repairing reputations. There are probably, I'm going to guess, 10 to 1 businesses that are legitimate, honest type of businesses that for one reason or another have negative reputation stuff online about them. Negative things have been posted. These could be businesses that, you know, served a bad meal to somebody on a bad day and got some negativity there to businesses that had, you know, a, a bad employee that caused their reputation to be damaged. And that one in 10, you know, is a business that legitimately deserves the negative criticism they get. And they're contacting a reputation management company because they just want to cover up their, their dirty laundry. When you encounter a business that has dirty laundry they want covered up, the best thing you can do is really just to discard the client, you know, just reject them as a client. I personally will never work with a business that has a bad reputation in terms of having actually done something nefarious and wrong. And businesses like that are most apt to turn on you and to smear your reputation when you have problems, when the work is not effective, because there's a problem with this. You cannot clean up a reputation without cleaning up the behavior first. And this is just an absolute truism. If a business is behaving in a way that's getting at negative consequences online, it has to first stop behaving in that way before anything can change online. Otherwise, it's like trying to bail out the ocean with a bucket. It's never going to happen. Make sure that when you handle reputation management, if you decide to resell this service and you decide to... Uh, engage in reputation management, you take this entire field and you look at it very much on a case-by-case -case basis, okay? Look at reputation management as a very personalized service to each and every client. It is not something that you can sell like McDonald's Happy Meals. This is not a one-size-fits-all. It's not a service in a box. It's something that has to be handled in a very delicate, individual way, even if the actual underlying service you're selling is something that is more of a one-size-fits-all, you still have to be very careful about who you sell that service to. Always safeguard your reputation and never do anything to put you, yourself, or your business in jeopardy. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, feel free to subscribe to our channel, leave a comment below, and hit that bell. We like to hear from you. 